So this story is interesting. There's a company called Chainalysis. What they're doing is they're using their software innovation technology to track Bitcoin transactions. Of course, cryptocurrencies, for example, Bitcoin are very commonly used in crime for money laundering or for illegal transactions because they're very difficult to trace. But what caught my attention was there was this legal case. I'm going to explain what it's about in a bit. But the head of investigation at this company Chainalysis, which is designed to track Bitcoin transactions, transactions and is also used by law enforcement, this company, the head of investigation, was asked in a testimony if there's any evidence, any scientific proof that their technology works. And she said she's not aware of it. What I found very interesting about this case is that, of course, when you have a technology that is used by law enforcement in order to prosecute people, to identify people, to trail people, to track certain transactions and to point out individuals, you want to make sure that this technology is legit. You want to make sure that this technology works as advertised, that there's actually some type of technological magic behind it that has been verified that these things are accurate. And it goes even further that she said that they don't really collect data when it comes to the accuracy to the error rate. So let's say their technology exposes certain relationships or maybe exposes a certain party to be in charge of a certain crypto wallet and has conducted a certain transaction. They apparently don't collect the error rate. So if this is actually untrue, there's no way to really verify that. So this caught my interest because it sounded like a mess. It sounded like a company that is used at the highest level that should be very validated, but apparently it is not. So if this technology is not proven at all, what are they doing and why is it used by law enforcement? I mean, the FBI, the DEA, there are a lot of different organizations that are using that. So what's going on here? Let me give you a very short introduction into blockchain technology. As a non-expert, if there's any expert watching this, then skip ahead. So very, very simply the normal financial transactions you know they are basically owned or they're controlled by a central authority let's say your bank your bank has your bank account information if you want to transfer let's say a certain amount of money or if you want to withdraw some money you have to ask your bank you don't control your finances your bank is controlling your finances and if you want to send something from one account to your friend's account your bank has to change that in the books so basically if there's a ledger then the bank is controlling the ledger because they have a list of bank accounts and if your bank account now has $100 going out and your friend has $100 going in it's their list it's their ledger all they have to do is change the numbers so they hold the ledger they're in control of the financial ledger and now and I know this is going to be very dumbed down this is for people who don't pay attention and they just in a very very high level way want to know what Bitcoin is about now imagine this ledger which is the list of accounts the list of transaction who owns what now now imagine this ledger is not held by a single bank, it is held by a decentralized network. So the same ledger as a copy exists in a lot of different places. So even if you were to destroy one part of the network, all the other copies are still there and they're always in sync. So it's not like part of the ledger is on this side, another part is on the other side. No, this entire ledger is fully synchronized and they're all identical. And the equivalent of that is, imagine if you want to make a normal bank transfer, you go to your bank bank you say you want to transfer 100 bucks to your friend then all the bank has to do is check if you have the authority to actually make that transfer and then if they feel like you have the authority they're going to make the transfer but now imagine with a decentralized network for example bitcoin it wouldn't be that easy because there's no single authority you can go to it's a decentralized network so what's happening is that if you want to make a transaction in the network the entire network has to agree that this transaction is okay so you if you have control over this wallet then the entire network is going to confirm that you actually have the authority to make that transaction and once the entire network the entire blockchain network has agreed that this is okay it's going to proceed this is why it takes some time for a bitcoin transaction to go through but very simply speaking because everybody agrees there's no need to trust other people which is why very often it's called a trustless system because you don't need to trust someone to make the right transaction the entire system has to agree that this is okay but there's a lot of new nuances because there are a lot of different blockchain technologies, a lot of different cryptocurrencies. Not all cryptocurrencies are going to be like Bitcoin, but in the example of Bitcoin, Bitcoin is not an anonymous technology, it is a pseudonymous technology because it's not like you can't see who does the transaction, you just don't know who that individual is. So for example, you can see the address, but you don't know who that address represents. This is the equivalent of seeing someone's phone number, but you can't see who that phone number belongs to. So 
there's clearly a problem because let's say there's a huge money laundering operation going on. The government wants to figure out, okay, who is doing that? It could be funding of nuclear weapons, for example, with the Lazarus Group of North Korea. It could be child exploitation. It could be anything. There's a lot of reasons why the government would like to know what's going on. And these things make sense. But here's the thing. How do you figure out which person owns which wallet or which person represents which transaction if people can create thousands of wallets pretty quickly all of these wallets are going to be pseudonymous nobody knows who they belong to and people can freely transact so how do you figure that out but this is basically where blockchain forensics comes in because the whole idea is that you have an investigation approach you don't know who owns which wallet so for example let's say i have a crypto wallet i have public keys i have private keys if i have my private keys and i use that for a transaction that i am the only one who controls that wallet but also nobody knows it's me so as long as i don't identify that this is my wallet and that i hold the keys nobody is ever going to know so this is why blockchain forensics takes an investigation approach so this explanation is going to be relevant because the main question that i was interested in is this going to be a scam company is this a fraud is this something that is used at the highest level and they don't have a technology that works is that a theranos situation where they say we can measure all of these diseases with a drop of blood but in the end the whole technology didn't work and they were just scamming people so this is what i want to figure it out so in order to figure it out you have to first understand what the approach of their technology is so they're using the basic forensic principle of gathering as much data as possible if there's a dead body and then someone tries to figure out what happened they're going to look for cctv they're going to take blood samples they're going to investigate the body they're going to try to collect as much data as they possibly can and once they have very comprehensive view from a lot of different angles they're going to try to draw conclusions about what happened so this is basically what chain analysis is doing because if you've heard about this mount gox hack which was the biggest crypto hack at the time where i think 70 percent of all cryptocurrencies were on this exchange or going through this exchange and the exchange got hacked back in 2014 so of course this was a huge disaster and a story of complete incompetence because there weren't real good protections at the time but one of the founders of chain analysis was tasked with tracking or tracing the hackers that actually took the money from mount gox so this was a company that was formed out of a real need or real world example of trying to figure out what happens if bitcoins are maliciously taken away from a certain source but the whole network is kind of public because everybody right now can go on the bitcoin blockchain and look for transactions all you need to know is the transaction number or the wallet number and you can actually trace all of these transactions so here's what chain analysis is trying to do they're trying to gather as much data as possible from known sources so for example every time any person is going to identify hey this is my wallet chain analysis analysis for example would copy that and would put that in the system so they know this wallet belongs to this individual so i wouldn't be surprised if every influencer youtube or whatever that has a wallet number identified on their page or on their website a company like chain analysis maybe not that particular one but it's going to be added to an index it's the same thing if you were to publicize your email address or your phone number they are marketing companies that are going to put you on a list and then they're going to be scammed and spammed for eternity because now they know that this number is associated with you so the same thing with wallets so for example what they would do is they would try to create an intelligence layer above the public blockchain so you can see the public blockchain is literally very cryptic because you don't know who is doing what all you can see is there's 10 bitcoins going from there to there but you know what's happening you don't know who that long number represents it's all pseudonymous so they create an intelligence layer on top of that where they try to identify as many wallets as possible they can say this cluster of wallets belongs to the ftx exchange then this thing belongs to this company tesla is holding some bitcoin they are trying to identify as many individuals and organizations as possible they for example even would create an account with an exchange and then transfer money to that exchange and then track where it's going to go so they are basically actively engaging an exchange and then are on the side tracking where their money is going and then they identify identify okay all of our money is flowing into this wallet it's split up into these wallets but these wallets are then connected to other wallets and there's a lot of individuals also sending money small amounts of money these have to be users of the exchange so they're almost in a very out of war style trying to gather intelligence whatever method they can and this is the equivalent
equivalent of an investigator going, let's say, undercover into a drug den and trying to buy drugs. They are just trying to engage and then gather data because you have to imagine whatever they're doing in the real world, creating an account with an exchange and then sending money to the exchange. But in the blockchain world, they can just track where the money is going. And if you think about this, it's kind of fascinating because when I was starting to research this a little bit, and this is not an in-depth deep dive research, this is a very basic explanation of this interesting case that is a little bit controversial because clearly the premise is kind of shocking. There is no scientific evidence. They have no proof this works. It sounds really messed up, especially if it's used in legal cases. But it is fascinating because it is not a software tech innovation as we are used to it, that they have whatever, some type of AI and they're solving a problem in a new way. And this software in and of itself is doing all the work. No, it's more like they are doing boots to the ground investigation. So it makes a lot of sense that a technology like that is used by law enforcement because this is their daily bread. This is what they do. They investigate, they gather evidence, they try to have as many angles as possible, and then they form a case. So this is illegal software. This is something that is used to gather evidence and is used to support investigations. So here's a case that's happening now. There's a guy who is accused of running the Bitcoin mixer Bitcoin fog. And what this is, is you have to imagine there's this whole illegal ecosystem that is using cryptocurrency. It's not a secret. If you want to buy a gun, if you want to buy drugs and it has to be illegal, then you're probably going to do that using blockchain because it is pseudonymous. Or let's say Bitcoin it is pseudonymous. It is something that is not easy to track. It is something that is much easier to use than a bank transfer because there's no or very little KYC, know your customer. Banks have to know who they're dealing with. Bitcoin is free. Everybody can use Bitcoin. So of course it is used for legal means, but if everything is traceable, everything is public, it is pseudonymous, you can't really just get, let's say, a few million and then with that you buy whatever, a huge load of drugs, and then you can just take that a few million, send it to an exchange and turn it into US dollars. Because the exchange has KYC, know your customer, they're going to identify you and then law enforcement is going to say uh, you were the guy that got a few million to sell drugs right and then they're going to know it's you because you just identified yourself on the exchange so that's a problem even if you use it in a legal way as soon as you try to convert the money or get the money out it's a problem you're going to be tracked the technology like chain analysis is going to trace you and as soon as you convert it you're done so what exists crypto mixers so what they do is they take let's say 100 bitcoins you just got 100 bitcoins in your wallet. That's a lot of money. So what they do is they wash that money for you. In a similar way in which you would wash, let's say, US dollars, if you have made, for example, US dollars in an illegal way, you want to still try to tax that money. Otherwise, you can't really use it without, say, the government or the IRS getting suspicious. So what you're doing is you take the money you've illegally obtained and you flow it into one of your cash businesses. Because if you have a restaurant, nobody knows how many people actually come to your restaurant. This is not going to be tracked. But what the IRS is going to track is how much cash you got from that restaurant. So let's say the actual cash you made on that day is $10,000. You just say, hey, it was $12,000. Now you just added $2,000 from your legal activities. And now you just say $12,000 is what came in. And now the money is washed. Because from the IRS perspective, this is legitimate income, even though you just added $2,000 to your day. And this is also where the term money laundering comes from, because I believe this started with Al Capone and these laundry laundry shops. So they had a lot of cash transaction, they had a lot of drug money, they just put through their laundry shops and then it was clean. So it's actually a pretty good name. I don't know if that is true. But a similar concept you can have with cryptocurrency. Because let's say the FBI is looking at your wallet. They see that your wallet just got 100 Bitcoin. The FBI knows it got 100 Bitcoin. Now the FBI, they have their pen and paper and they're waiting what is going to happen with these 100 Bitcoins. And as soon as we can identify who it is, we're going to put them in jail. So you want to avoid them figuring that out. So what do you do? You use, for example, Bitcoin Fork, which is a mixer. They're going to take the 100 Bitcoin and they're going to make a ludicrous amount of transactions. They're going to split it up, split it up tiny amounts. They're going to have 100 transactions here, 100 transactions there. They're going to move the Bitcoin in circles in the smallest fragment. And after a long, 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 long time, you get your 100 Bitcoin back. So this is a literal mixer. They're going to take it apart and then they're going to put it back together at the end. So this is supposed to confuse those that track cryptocurrency transactions, for example, law enforcement. And chain analysis is one of the technologies that is trying to mitigate that. No matter how complex it is, they will 
try to figure out where the money goes, who is the person who is actually the final beneficiary of that transaction. And this guy who is prosecuted as the alleged founder or the operator of Bitcoin Fork, this is where the head of investigation of chain analysis said there's no proof the technology works, we have no evidence, and we don't even collect any information on the failure rate. And on top of that, they also said that we're using customer feedback to validate our technology. This sounds insane if you just take it at face value. Because imagine a company like Tesla saying, we use customer feedback to know if our cars work. This would be insane. You want to make sure that the car manufacturer is actually testing the cars before they're going out. They're doing extensive security tests. And only when the cars function perfectly, they go out to the customer. They don't use customer feedback to check if they work. So it sounds insane that a technology like chain analysis that is tracking Bitcoin transaction and is used by law enforcement to prosecute people is saying that, that they actually use customer feedback for that. With the software technology, even there you would say, hey, this is kind of insane because before Google is launching Gmail or something like an antivirus software, before these softwares go to the market, they have been extensively tested. So none of these companies would say, we are using customer feedback to know the technology works. This is completely insane. Because imagine how it could be used. Let's say you have a software used to track Bitcoin or let's say cryptocurrency transactions and it doesn't really work or there's no evidence that it works, then it could just be a way to rig the system because we all know that certain type of profiling by the color of your skin is not okay. So it shouldn't be that if you go to the airport and you have a certain skin color, you're always going to be pulled out. Or even if you have long hair or you look like the hippie type, it's kind of unfair to be pulled out because we should be beyond that. Although if you look like a hippie and you look a little bit stoned, maybe it does make sense. But it shouldn't be used for profiling because it could also be used for harassment. If there's a certain person, let's say someone who is very vocal or very well known or they have committed a crime in the past and you see something, maybe you're going to just say, Chain analysis told me that this might be used so we're going to arrest you now based on that evidence. So if that technology doesn't work, this could be used just to harass people. You have very inaccurate software and proving accuracy by customer feedback could mean something like we don't care what they do with it we are giving them the tech reasoning to do what they want and if they want to harass people they can do it so it sounds like a potential to profile people and to harass people so after reading about this whole thing and also listening to some interview of course the cryptocurrency community or industry a lot of people jumped on this because chain analysis is a cryptocurrency company so they are not in the game of creating cryptocurrencies but they are in the game of analyzing blockchain so they are in the cryptocurrency industry although they don't seem to be very much appreciated or very loved in the general sense is technology like that is going to exist no matter what but if there's a technology that is designed or let's say a community designed around counterculture designed around hey we don't want to be involved with the government we don't want the government to track us and now you have a crypto company that is actually helping the government to track people and potentially even harass and profile people of course are going to hate it. So most of the interviews I saw around the chain analysis controversy where they said there's no evidence was okay they are scams, they are fraud, this technology doesn't work, this is a major fraud, we have to get rid of this but what made much more sense to me is that this is like a drug sniffing dog. If you have a drug sniffing dog, it's not going to sniff every single drug and it's not going to be accurate every single time because it is more an art than a science. There's no science behind smelling drugs and when it comes to tracking bitcoin transactions it can be so complex because literally everybody can create thousands of wallets and we can make an infinite amount of transactions so this is so complex and there's so little data so they have very very little to go on so everything they can produce is going to be probability based and they're going to be wrong so what makes sense to me is that all they're trying to do is generate leads they're trying to generate leads for law enforcement and then they can use their authority to actually check if these leads were correct and this actually makes a lot of sense because chain analysis is very limited in the data they can have. So the way I understand it, it is more of a lead generator. So they can point out a certain individual and then law enforcement can use whatever subpoena warrants to get more information and to actually get proof that this person is guilty. And this is power that only law enforcement would have because what law enforcement can do is they use chain analysis and they can say, we think that these wallets are held by Tesla. 
And then they can send Tesla a subpoena saying that we want you to confirm that these are your wallets. And then Tesla has to respond. They have to say, these are our wallets. We have the private keys. We control them. Or they can say, no, we do not control these wallets. And the same with exchanges. So chain analysis is a tool that doesn't work on its own. It only works if it has the executive authority of law enforcement to actually confirm the data. And then it makes sense. Because for me, what would I do with chain analysis? Most data of the blockchain is not public. I don't know who owns what. If I send a letter to Tesla, they're never going to respond to me. But if law enforcement, if the FBI is going to contact them, they have to respond. If the FBI is contacting FTX and FTX has to confirm if they control certain keys or control certain wallets, then they have to respond because the FBI has the authority. So chain analysis is more like a drug sniffing dog and it is operated by an officer and the officer has the actual executive authority to say, take off your pants. I want to see what the drug was sniffing. And then maybe it's going to be a very awkward moment because there's nothing there and it's some grandma and she maybe smelled a little bit like weed for whatever reason and the dog was barking. Or maybe it was a huge drug smuggle and grandma had a lot of drugs in their pants. But you're only going to figure it out once you take off the pants. So this, in my mind, is the role of chain analysis. They're only there to bark, but they're not the definite proof. Nobody's going to prison because a dog barked. They're going to prison if they actually carry two kilos of cocaine. So to me, it makes a lot of sense that they say we don't collect data on, let's say, false positives. So we don't collect data on the error rate and we are using customer feedback to confirm the results. Because imagine you're the FBI. You're using a third party tool by chain analysis. This is a technology that provides you with some, let's say, an easier dashboard, some intelligence, and you can generate leads. If you subpoena Tesla, FTX, Siemens, a lot of different companies, and you want to know if they control certain wallets, or you subpoena certain individuals and trying to figure out if they control certain wallets, you are not really incentivized, or maybe you're not even allowed to, to give that feedback to chain analysis. Because in the end, chain analysis is a private company, so maybe you're not going to share all the data. If you have found that certain companies control certain wallets, maybe you want to keep that private. Maybe you don't want to share that with chain analysis. So I would understand why they would say that, so we don't collect the full error rate. Because if they had that data, they would basically collect it by default, I guess. So does the FBI tell chain analysis every time they got a warrant or they acted on a warrant or they sent out a subpoena? Probably not. Chain analysis maybe gets the information who owns which wallet or who controls which wallet, but they probably don't get the information about the subpoenas and so on. So it doesn't surprise me that they can't really collect most data and the governments probably don't care too much about it. I find it very interesting that this is a very unique technology. I don't think it's crazy sophisticated. It's a normal software company. It's not this new magical thing, but this is bound to exist and there's going to be more of these technologies because the more cryptocurrencies are used and the more they're trying to move away from the public ledger. So for example, there are some that are basically private where you can't see anything. So there's going to be technologies that are trying to mitigate that. The more security is going to be in the crypto space, the more technologies like chain analysis are going to pop up. But don't forget, the whole Bitcoin blockchain is public. So it's not like they are trying to elicit non-public information. They're doing everything within legal means to get public information. And if someone is dumb enough to announce that they're controlling certain wallets, obviously this is their thing. So where do I think this is going? I don't think this is a major fraud. It could still be this video might just age very poorly. Maybe in the future it's going to come out that chain analysis was making everything up and it's a major fraud. I don't think so. I think there's going to be more technologies like this. I think law enforcement is going to rely on these types of technologies a lot. All right, let me know what you think about chain analysis and these Bitcoin forensic solutions in general. Thanks for watching.